Well, I'm joined now by Professor Douglas Hardy from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Uh, he's been researching Kilimanjaro for nearly 20 years. Uh, Professor, thanks for coming uh, on the show. Now, these glaciers in Africa, it's not something you would associate with Africa, but tell me, in your time studying them over the last 20 years, what have you seen as the growing trend? Well, thank you. Yes, I'd like to start by applauding the UNESCO and the authors of this report uh, on World Heritage Glaciers. It's a very useful overview of a dire situation faced by these critical ecosystems. Um, so to your question, you know, Africa, of course, is a huge continent. Uh, there are three mountains with glaciers, all very near the equator and high above the iconic African plains. There's Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, Mount Kenya, and, of course, the Ruwenzori Massif, which straddles the border between Uganda and the DRC. Well, when 19th century explorers returned to Europe, uh, many scientists there didn't even believe their initial reports of snow on these mountains. So it is uh, a little incongruous to have glaciers in snow uh, right on the equator. The current glaciers on these three mountains are really quite tiny, uh, perhaps three square kilometers in total. So very different from the bulk of the glaciers in this report. Um, Kilimanjaro is the highest at about 6,000 meters, and it's by far the best known. So for perspective, uh, when I started in 2000, uh, there were three main glaciers and six to eight smaller ones. Today, only the northern ice field on Kilimanjaro is an intact glacier, and there's maybe 10 fragments of glaciers elsewhere on the summit. Um, these uh, glaciers will likely be gone within five to 10 years. Not the northern ice field, but the, the smaller glaciers. And now, what is actually leading to that? We can say things like climate change, but that's a very broad term in this specific sense. Uh, what is the direct impact? Where is it coming from? Well, it's an appropriate term in this case. Um, climate change is the fundamental problem. It is warming of the atmosphere and the ocean, which is profoundly changing these patterns of temperature and precipitation everywhere on Earth. And it, different glaciers have different causal mechanisms. The physics are a little different, but it's fundamentally the change in, in warmth, heat content of the atmosphere in the ocean. And just a quick word on the effect that uh, the melting of those glaciers in Kilimanjaro might have on the surrounding community and environment. Right. Uh, humans have lived in the shadows of these mountains for millennia. Um, so they've developed a fascination and a reverence for the glaciers, which shine brightly during the dry season. Uh, but these days, the glaciers, I think, are really most important as draws for tourism. Thanks so much. That is Professor Douglas Hardy from the University of Massachusetts Amherst.